Hi, I'm Carl Tannenbaum, Chief Economist for Northern Trust. Inflation seems to be everywhere at the moment, and the reasons for its resurgence seem obvious today. But just 18 months ago, virtually no one anticipated this outcome. The myopia was a combination of anchored expectations and developments that surprised us. We'll want to avoid a repeat of the short-sightedness in the months ahead. It's important to remember that the concern prior to the pandemic was that inflation was too low. Despite the longest expansion in American history and very low unemployment, prices were not rising very rapidly. Expectations were anchored by this experience, which led observers to dismiss the early signs of higher inflation as transitory. From there, a series of revelations altered our perspectives. Among them are the following. First, we know now that we overstimulated the economy. At the outset of the pandemic, policymakers viewed the risk of doing too little as being greater than doing too much. Fortunately, activity recovered more quickly than expected, but that left substantial amounts of excess demand in the economy. In one specific case, the combination of immense stimulus and low interest rates created a housing boom, which is bleeding over into inflation through the cost of shelter. Secondly, supply chains turned out to be more brittle than we had suspected. In recent decades, modern logistics have been raised to a high art, so many assumed that production bottlenecks would be quickly overcome. As it turned out, initial disruptions proved more lasting, and COVID's continuing hold on China has made matters worse today than they were two years ago. Next, we learned that workers have renewed leverage. COVID-19 has had a range of negative impacts on labor supply. Public health has been impaired, immigration has been halted, and workers have moved to new locations. All of this has contributed to labor shortages that have empowered employees. Firms are finding it easy to pass higher wages along to their customers, which creates an inflationary cycle. And finally, unfortunately, we've learned that peace is not a given. A year ago, an attack on Ukraine was not seen as a high likelihood. But when the invasion began, the disruption caused by the conflict and sanctions related to it added further fuel to inflation. At this moment, an end to the fighting and its economic consequences do not seem near at hand. Some of these factors will certainly ease in the months ahead, reducing the pressure on prices. Yet the prevailing wisdom today seems to be that inflation will never revert to its former levels. As we've just learned, we need to be on guard against anchoring ourselves too deeply when the seabed is shifting so quickly. And that's the view from here.